Hey, you're going to have to give me the thumbs up when he says okay because I can't see him. Hey, everybody. <laughs> What's going on? It's Carlos from Immortals Inc. Podcast here coming to you from you live from our podcast studio in the basement of Immortals Inc.'s building, which is Center West in Rocky River, Ohio. Park West. Was Center West the old building? All oh, right. Okay. So anyway, Park West. <laughs> and as always, I have Nate with me. Hello. Nate Elwood's going to be doing a review of Dragon Raid today. I know all of you are anticipating this game. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I am. It's interesting. I'll give it that. Uh, but in the first take, I always would like to thank all of our co-producers, also our Patreon supporters. We'll go down the list of Elian, uh, Thomas Forms, my favorite, Lane DeLong. We'd like to see some of his. He was doing the last time I saw him play was... Sisters of Battle. Yes. Did he beat you up with them? Oh, yes. Okay, yeah. that's good. A.E. <laughs> <A>. Genozzi, <laughs> Jonesy. <laughs> Melo Aravia, that's John Dunn's company. Oh, I got to tell you something about John Dunn. I want to not tell you about him, but oh, okay. I have an okay. idea about that crusade campaign. Cool. Uh, Roger Cherney. Hey, Roger, we're going to start uh, doing D&D again in September for Wednesdays. So, uh, Rusty the Rytel, the proprietor of... The Rusty Dragon Inn, which is still available for rent. I just hung some new posters in it. I want you to check it out, Nate, because I think it looks cool. And uh, that's it. If you want to be a supporter or co-producer, just uh, see us on Patreon. Just go to Patreon, Immortals, Inc. We're right there. And uh, get some cool stuff. Or we'll have to do something for it. We do do stuff for it. Yeah. T-shirts, some other stuff. We're slacking, though. So yeah. we're sorry, guys. Everyone's slacking right now. I know, it's, I know. I keep going time. back and forth. Anyway, and then uh, what came out new this week? Um, well, tomorrow we're going to be doing the uh, box break for the new Mythos, Mythic Odyssey of Theros. Mm -hmm. They have their miniatures. So Diana and I are going to do box breaks. So those are going to be available. Oh, cool. So if you see some online. Are these the pre-painted ones? Yeah, the pre-painted okay. ones are pretty good. And then uh, Double Masters for Magic came out. We still have some Double Masters left. We have the VIP boosters. Um. I don't know what else to say about it. It's, it's pretty good. I, it was really, the price I paid was like high. I'm like, ooh. And then uh, I think, man, I hope these sell. But I've been, we've been selling a lot, right, Josh? And uh, uh, magic, sold. magic. I mean, it, yeah, but I mean, sometimes when their prices get a little up, I, I get scared. But then guys come in and I haven't heard any complaints about it. They're like, oh, I got a bad box. You know, I barely made my money back, which is, just, or they oh, I only made my money back. You know, there wasn't like big cards. And I'm like, well, right. So you got what you paid for, so I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> You're happy with what you it got. It is random. You, like, just you realize didn't, it. You, you, didn't, uh, you didn't make more than what you were hoping for. Yeah. That's how I feel all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there's that. Uh, 40K is coming out with this weekend. Last weekend, I got to call that rep today. Last weekend, I, I, I don't know what happened with shipping, but did you see those bookends that came out with the heresy bookends? Yes. Okay, yes. I got a couple. but Oh, that's cool. Well, I should. I yeah. don't know what happened. They didn't arrive. So, but they're coming out with box sets. You see that it was like the recruit. Yeah, they have three different levels. You like you said, you have a small box set that just has recruit a small amount of miniatures, and basically the old. I think they'll know no fear type box yeah, set where it's like yeah, just yeah. enough to have like a tiny mm -hmm. battle with like use the box as the terrain or something in a play mat or something. And then it goes up from there. There's all the way up to like command a, command. Which yeah, is like, where it's it's got. It's got a bunch of scenery in there, like yeah, a, a proper starter yeah, box it's, it's set. Like it's two factions. It's like a two hundred dollar box, a hundred twenty dollar box, and then like a fifty dollar box or something. Yeah, so. it, it's G Dub, so it's yeah, uh, it's it's always good stuff. I don't. Get although, it. unfortunately, with the pandemic, I, I haven't been able to really put models on a table or throw some dice other than with my son. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, and he's terrible. No, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. He, he probably beat you. Oh, uh, it, it it's fun though. I mean, it's at first I'm like, oh, this is you know. This is going to be a really, you know, a new edition. But I like what they've done, so it's it's nice to, to find the little nuances of it and whatnot. Yeah. I, I can't wait for for hopefully this to clear. I, I really have been there. thinking about that crusade you talked about. I, yeah, I, I do want a little. I think we can get a few guys to do at least a crusade campaign. With, I would with us. I think I know you'd be in. so oh, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't even ask you. I figured you'd be in anyway. So I, it'd be I had an idea great. for it. So that's why I want to talk to you about see if I can get John Dunn on board on this. But um, and then uh, I miss role playing too. I mean, honestly, it's, it's, this is rough. <laughs> yeah, they, they, st guys have started to come in, and some of the the other guys that want to play that you know feel that they're good with it. Uh, we're gonna have a like a 
uh, on Wednesday nights we're going to start September again with D and D Adventure League, mm-hmm. but it's going to be like obviously it's going to be spaced out and you know not as many. But we still have the Rusty Dragon in. I, I'm going to start advertising that, but it's a private gaming room. So if you want to come up and meet with your friends, you go in there. It's private. Do whatever you got to do. It's like sitting down. At, I'm going to treat it as sitting down at a uh, restaurant. Yeah, that's a private booth. You know, you sit in there and you just don't. That's your business. No masking. And I think uh, I'm also going to put some I got some glass doors. I'm going to be putting on those two rooms, hopefully, so it'll look cooler. So I can put stencils. I know it's not a big deal to you. To me, it's a big deal. I think it's, uh, it's still pretty cool. So. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, just working on a lot of stuff here. So anyway, let's get down to this dragon raid. I, I, yes. uh, Josh, let me know when we hit like 30 minutes because uh, last week we went way over like an hour. But it was an interesting topic for the, uh, not last week, but the last podcast yes. was uh, 40K. I just t- oh, I have to move the box. All right. Yeah. Is that better? Okay. So what happened? So Dragon Raid. I'll try to make this quick, but there is a lot. Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be exact. It, but Well, it's there's a lot to this game. But go ahead. So er, comes in the big old red box, which anybody who's ever, uh, well, anybody who was playing in the uh, early days will remember the box 80s, set. Yeah. The old box set. In fact, to be honest, I really think that this box is just their exact design from the 80s. I just think everything is the same. <laughs> yeah. But what do you get inside this this thirty five dollar box? Well, you gotta you gotta give a little history of Dragon Raid oh, there. Okay, as Dragon Raid was uh, back in the eighties when D and D seventy and eighties D and D the church really attacked it. Well, uh, not the church per se, but the a church. group Religious. of the church. Yes, the the I think it was called Bad Brotherhood against Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, there were some other ones too, yes. but that was the main one, and uh, they really went after D and D, and uh, so much so that I, I think Gary Gygax. And one of the proponents of that actually debated each other on either a talk show or something, really? or sixty minutes or something like that. I'm I'm not positive. It was a long <laughs> that would have been fun. time ago. <laughs> that would have been fun to but, see. But I mean, it's basically you have to remember this. This was a came out of that time period of Dungeons and Dragons is subverting children and young adults to paganism and occult and ultimately mm-hmm. hell and damnation. There's some, I have it, the pamphlet, I should have had a picture of it, but I have a, those little pamphlets you find at like the stop, you know, like on highway stations. Or like, they're not, I don't want to say Jehovah Witness because they're not, but I can't think but of what But predominantly they're, Jehovah Witnesses yeah, hand out these pamphlets yeah, of, but it's of a the little world thing, as yeah. they see it, yes. And you know, they have it like, oh, when you play Dungeons and Dragons and you play these role playing games. You're going to be evil, and Satan's going to take your soul, and you're going to go to hell, and then you're going to commit the, suicide. When yeah, you, the your suicide. Dies. There's always a suicide yeah. in there, and then burning books at the end. Yeah, and then, <laughs> yeah. They, they're literally, they're burning the D and D books at the end. They're all happy and yeah. great, and it's funny. Two two reasons because if you look at those little pamphlets, whoever the artist was, mm-hmm. always drew the women as really hot. I don't know if you ever saw them. They were always like these like overly sexualized women, and you're like. When you're a little kid, you're like, oh, I want to play this game. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what it reminded me of? Um, the art looked as though, I don't know if you ever read Mad Magazine back in the day. Yeah, but yeah, the yeah, art yeah. reminded me of one of the artists from Mad Magazine. Yes. I don't know if, so if there's I, any correlation yeah. there or if it's just a, a similar so I, style. I don't know if that's what he believed and then he just has his art style or yeah. that was just one big joke to him over top of everything. <laughs> it could have been. It could have. But I mean, I, I, like I said, I, I don't know who the artists of those things are. I just When I looked at it, I'm like, wow, that looks a lot like... Like Mad Magazine's type of like, yeah, type it's, of art. I got it hang. I should have put a picture up of it, but maybe I'll put it with the uh, the post or something. But yeah, it's uh, it's a little pamphlet, and then I have a book at home that was published by. It's called The Cataclysm of D and D of Dungeons and Dragons, mm-hmm. and it just goes on this whole rant on how it's a terrible thing. And uh, but it came out about the same time that Dragon Raid, so that leads us up to Dragon Raid. So Dragon Raid. So Dragon Raid. It's not even truly a role-playing game it's it's considered a what they say is a adventure learning system okay so Mm -hmm. it's it's it really is a biblical teaching tool that uses elements of role play in a fantasy setting to teach biblical teachings (laughs) yeah because like even way to describe like even on the bottom of the box it says dragon ray the exciting new adventure for courageous christians yes so it's it's directed directly at and and uh it's hard to like i i'm trying i tried to make my review about the game itself Mm -hmm. but it's really hard to do that because it's so shackled in with this idea of 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 a learning tool just the way the game is set up 
But let's get in. If if you're so inclined, let, let's let's look at what you get in this box because it is a ton of stuff. You have the Light Raiders Handbook. It's 100 pages. This is the player's guide. It details the setting, the history, and character creation. All right. You have the new player's briefing, which, again, is just giving you a lot of flavor. Um, background. Background of the world, uh, some of the key vocabulary that's going to be used throughout the game, and a bunch of really not bad like watercolors. So to be honest, the art in this book isn't terrible. I mean, it no, looks it's like it's from good. the 80s, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but it, it's, not, it's not that bad at all. Uh, then you have your rule book. This is kind of how the system I'd actually play the system. Look how thin that is. It, it's it's pretty, it's a very basic system to be mm -hmm. honest with you. Um, then you have the Adventure Master's Manual or the, the Dungeon Master Guide, if if you will, a loose leaf, um, and this has all the meat and potatoes of how to run the game, uh, more advanced combat if you if you want to implement that, um, how characters can advance, and more in depth into the world around it. And then you have three adventure books. You have the Light Raider Test, which is the introductory adventure. You have uh, Rescue of the Sacred Sc Scrolls, which is supposed to go right after that one. And then the Moonbridge Raid. Of these three adventures, only the Moonbridge Raid I would consider an actual adventure. These two are just chugga-chugga uh, railroads to get people to figure out how to play the game. Um, but... So thought was placed into... Yeah, there was a lot of thought placed into this game. This was not a, a game that was just kind of thrown together, cobbled together. Whoever designed it, or the people who did design it, they put thought into it and they put effort into it. it it's it's not that. It's not The production value isn't bad. For for 1980s, like this, these trifold characters, I mean, that was pretty much standard in RPGs. You have battle grids to, to show combat and movement on it. You mm -hmm. have a battle worksheet so that you can keep track. It's laminated so you can keep track of... of Everything that's going on, you have a whole pack of character sheets and then a whole pack of worksheets for <laughs> making a character, okay? So, it's so much work. Oh, it's, it's, and then, of course, you get the two awesome ten-sided dies called Starlots and one eight-sided die called the, this is called the Shadowstone. So ten-sided oh. dies are used by the PCs. The Shadowstone is used by the, the GM. Okay, so yeah. so as far as qual quantity goes, you get a lot in and that's this all book. That, and that's all the... Uh, yeah, I mean, well, you also get some monster counters to use on your battle boards and some uh, other counters, we'll call them, because uh, your light raiders, which are the, the PCs, they can pick up animal companions and things of that nature. Oh, so there's a ton cool. of stuff in this box. It really is jammed with content. Good stuff content <laughs> so let's get into the setting this, good this will take a few, stuff a few minutes just tell me if you've heard this before so setting <clears throat> it's a fantasy world called eden again oh boy okay uh so the maker created this world long ago and you know just got it formed it uh, then the evil one sent this red dragon called abaddon g-dub out there I, I don't know if they stole it from you or you stole it from them but called abaddon uh, who? Wait, what's Abaddon? Uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, I know in, in the forty k lore, but yep, that's got it, got it. Here nor there. Anyway, so this red dragon it steals this dragon egg, takes it to Eden again. The egg mutates. Nine offspring of that pop out. So you have these nine dragons that at first the people of Eden again, who are kind of in paradise, were like, "Ooh, these dragon things are majestic and they're interesting and they're beautiful." And then the dragons uh, gave him an apple. No, no I'm kidding. I'm sorry. Go Basically, <laughs> turn evil, subjugate the world, and put it into kind of darkness, mm -hmm. and enslave everybody there. Then the maker sends himself in the form of the overlord of many names down there, mm -hmm. who comes in and forces all the dragons north, and then selects this group of chosen people and starts to head south with them. <laughs> Okay. 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 Go ahead. The dragons pursue them, and the overlord of many names sacrifices himself in this epic battle where he creates this blinding light, this huge deluge of water. The dragons uh, use their fire breath to, to evaporate as much as they could without drowning, but he basically sacrifices himself so his followers could get away. Got it. Then. Three days later, when the dragons recuperated from this deluge of, of 
all that. They go to attack, and uh, the world actually responds by creating these gigantic mountain range that if the dragons fly up too high, their cold-blooded bodies won't be able to sustain themselves, so they can't fly over it. All the water around it turns into mist, so the dragons get cold and they can't get through it. And basically it protects these chosen people in the liberated lands. The people there now view themselves as separate from the rest of the world because now they know the truth of the maker and the overlord of many names and they call themselves the twice born and everybody else is the once born mm-hmm. and dragon slaves. Sounds familiar, right? Yeah, just a tad. It's cool. Here's another little caveat. <laughs> So all of the mythical creatures, very familiar. <laughs> all the mythical creatures, the uh, what they call uh, dark creatures, have been deported and exiled from various other planets throughout the universe. So all the bad apples get thrown into Eden again because that's where the dragons reign and and subjugate humans. Um, each one of these creatures, be it a troll or a giant or even more weird ones like the Greedos, each one of these creatures embody a certain type of sin. Like uh, the Greedo, for example, they were from a planet that was largely based on mercantile mercantile and bartering and fairness. And this group of Greedo uh, decided that, well, if I don't tell the truth when I'm bartering, I can then negotiate. <laughs> okay. And, and so they... Other people called that cheating. And, and so the people there rounded up this tribe, threw them in a spaceship, blasted them over to the Eden again, <laughs> and then the, the spaceships exploded after they left it. Okay, anyway, it's weird, all right? It is weird. Each dragon, there's different types of dragons, and they each have different abilities I, and I'm ways. Gonna, I'm not going to lie. I want to read this. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> it, it, I will, I'm not saying it's not interesting, but I, it, it's just that... Uh, like each dragon, not only are they powerful physically, but they also have, and all these creatures, they all have this, this, uh, what they call, um, I want to make sure I get this sin enchantments where like giants are bastions of mediocrity. They don't like going one way or another and they want everybody to stay in the exact same type of narrow minded nothingness. It. Yep. Right. Got it. Got it. So they can implant these sins, uh, sin enchantments on PCs and they can fall prey to it. And it, it gives a mechanic for how that happens. Dragons on the other hand are excessively powerful and they use like mind abilities to completely destroy your mm. faith or what have you. So that's the premise of the setting. It, it takes place, I think there's a nice little map on it. It takes place on this uh, Talina, which is part of Eden again. It's main continent to the south there's the liberated lands everything to the north is the dark lands or where the dragons rule and where humans are subjugated some of them without knowing they're being even being subjugated that's just life to them (laughs) so where the people where the pcs come in you are creating what is called a light raider you are part of the chosen twice born people and your goal is to go into the dark lands and awaken people to the overlord of many names, truth, and what have you. It says it's if you're a missionary. Exactly. <laughs> a missionary with a sword. Going yes. to the uncivilized areas. So, character creation. Oh, it's a lot of math. Oh, There's this... a reason why it comes with a worksheet. <laughs> All right? It's... Come on, man. It comes this with is... a worksheet. This there is... is a lot to do. <laughs> to cre- this... Now, it's simple math. Give us the abbreviated version. But basically... Back. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but basically it goes like this. Both sides done by, nine, by three o'clock, Josh. You have nine characteristics. They oh. are joy, love, peace, oh. patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I have none of those. <laughs> wow. You roll a 10-sided die for each one of those and derive a number. Off of those nine strengths, you derive all of your other character abilities All of their weapon abilities, their defensive abilities, their physical attributes, everything else is derived from those nine core strengths. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. I found that mechanic kind of interesting. Maybe not exactly the way it is here because it's a lot of math, but abstractly thinking, 
instead of having like in my mind instead of just having like an alignment it would be interesting if you had some like core strengths or moral strengths or even immoral strengths to mm-hmm. go against each other and you roll to find out where you fall kind of more randomly as far as an alignment goes like are you could have a lot of joy and a lot of gentleness but you are like a curmudgeon or, or something like it'd be interesting you find a Right. Weird things funny. Yes. <laughs> but at the same time, I mean, it, it's a lot of, it'd be a bit of work to, to work something like that into a game mechanic. But I thought like having those character strengths, that, that's kind of an interesting mechanic to me, to mm-hmm. be honest. And uh, here's where it gets even a little more weird though. You also have what's called the, you have armor of faith. And it's literally, if anybody went to a Bible school, you have the belt of truth, breastplate of righteousness, shield of faith, helmet of, of salvation, sword uh, of the spirit, boots of the gospel of peace. Basically, that is your defense. It's invisible. Nobody else can see it unless they're a dragon and so evil that they can see this presence upon you. It's so sort of like what they do in the movies where, like Hellboy. Yes. Where you see him as normal, but when somebody can see the true part of whoever it, it is. Past the glamour or whatever yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, past the... You can see what his actual, you know, one side. Oh, not even what was it? What was the movie? Help me out here. Uh, blah 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 blah. Oh, uh, Constantine. Yes, where you could see the angels and the devils for what they were. If you could see, okay, got it. Kind of like that. Just trying to make it in there. Yeah, kind of like that. But this stuff but actually derives. Live. Huh? They live. They live. Though they live. Yeah. Well. Yeah. 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 The grasses. But I mean, like I said, there's a lot to creating a character. Like I said, there's an entire worksheet. Love the worksheet. It's it's it makes it simple. I'll give that. There's, there's, <laughs> I, like I mean, it's just basic math. I like it. Like I addition, like it. subtraction, and division. <laughs> but it's it's a lot to go through. A lot of abbreviations. So, some secondary things you have to derive from uh, primary things, and then tertiary things you have to derive from secondary things and primary things. It's all on the worksheet, but it takes a little bit of time. It does take a little bit of time. Refer to workbook three. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> once you get done with all of that, once you pick the, once you derive all of your stuff, um, get your weapons, then you have to go through and see if you qualify this for is gonna any. Be a, this is going to be a dumb question, but do they actually have weapons? Like actual yeah. weapons? Okay, go ahead. They actually have weapons. Now, no, not in a bad way. I'm just curious. We'll, we'll, if get, how to they the, we'll okay. get to the weapons thing in a second, but um, right. not weapons, but combat in general. Yeah. Um, once you go through all that, then you can see if you fill a role within the light raider community or within your group. Mm-hmm. Um, and to do that, you have to derive different skills. And if you meet a threshold, then you can become like uh, they have just <sighs> leadership roles, um, animal talking, animal companions that you have psychic links with, uh, healing the sick and wounded, mm-hmm. even being able to change your appearance and stuff like that. But that's only if you hit the threshold. If, if you don't in the beginning, nobody has a role. As you gain ex- maturation points or units. Experience, experience points. points <laughs> you can then up stuff to hit those thresholds and become these light raider roles. right? So that's all the character. It's a lot. In a way. And in another way, it really isn't. It, there's not much to it. This is a very simple system. Getting to the system of it. Game mechanics. Everything will have your your ability level, okay? Mm-hmm. Against the difficulty. So let's say you have an ability of eight, and the difficulty is set at four. You look on this success grid, four to or eight to four, it's forty. Roll percental. If you roll forty or above, you succeed. If you roll thirty nine or below, you fail. Very That's simple. it. That that is it. That is it in combat. You roll a d10. You add various stuff to it. The game master, or I'm just gonna say it instead of adventure, game master rolls the uh, shadow stone, the eight sided, adds the creature's combat ability to it. If you beat that creature's combat ability, you hit him. Then he rolls his defense. If you beat the defense, he takes damage. The combat is. Pretty lethal, to be honest. These these creatures in here can wipe the floor with most beginning light raiders or any, really. I mean, the, the, you're, if you deal with a giant... Like in the very first one, you come across a giant. And a giant can literally just squish you. So they focus more on interaction and working through problems as opposed to just 
outright fighting, although when the swords have to swing, they can. However, fighting the once born or the slaves is not only completely frowned upon and but even killing one accidentally has serious consequences. Killing one maliciously has very serious consequences. See, I like that already. Because I, the, I, 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 okay, the maker I like the, yeah. doesn't want them to die, so just arbitrarily killing I, them. I like that already. I, I like that. But go ahead. But that I like that already because so, I see where they were going with that. I, and I see where they're going with it too. That you can work out problems without resorting to violence. Mm-hmm. I get that a whole lot. Um, however, for a role playing game, in my opinion, like like I said, it's it's, it's not your. I mean, it, most role playing games have to have a certain amount of moral ambiguity to it. Well, I think the fact on the cover it says courageous. Cra- yeah. <laughs> I mean, you but know what you're getting as soon as you get the this box. This is what you're getting into, though, <laughs> as far as that goes. So yeah. the mechanics are really simple. I mean, they have more, even more advanced combat stuff where you can have half swings and all that. But to be honest, it's, it's a very simple system. You have mm-hmm. the success grid. You roll for damage. You have criticals, stuff like that. But it's a very simple system. You, this is what you need to do. Do you do it or not? Okay. That's where we get into the weird, in my opinion, weird part. You, magic. There really isn't magic in this world. I, I could see why. That wouldn't obviously. surprise me at all. But to be honest, there they, is. They even mention the fact that there's magic. Kind of surprises me. But go ahead. But what they do have is what's called word runes, and basically, word runes are biblical text that your character memorizes. In order to be imbued with some power from the maker to face whatever challenge it may be. Many uh, word runes are needed to counter the sin enchantments and what have you. Basically, you have word runes which are just literally uh, Philippians 4, 6 or Matthew 11, 28. So you're teaching Bible verses. It is Bible and it's... It's stressed that they memorize it so they can say them verbatim without looking at the thing. Teaching. Right. It's a teaching tool. So each each verse has a rating on it, and the higher the rating, the more spectacular the effect, but the longer the verse. So like a level one may only have about 20 words to it, whereas a level three will have like 90 words to it. I s- okay. Um, Sounds like Skyrim. It, yeah. I mean, it's, like I said... It's Skyrim meant to the teach. video game. It's meant the, to teach the, the words Bible. Of power. Yeah. They're shouting in the game. Hmm. That's funny. So I read the very first adventure just to you know, as, as the all right, let me let me check it out. It's very railroaded and it needs to be to to teach you the it game. It teaches, yeah, yeah. But I it it's it really is going through just without doing any spoilers or anything. It, it's basically trying to give kids the idea that, you know, their will is God's or the maker, excuse me, or the overlord of many names. Mm-hmm. And, and you have to come you come across various <laughs> like TV special peer pressure type of encounters. <laughs> yeah, classic. Um, you, there's a big part in it where you have to pray, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. and, and mean it and stuff. So it, it, Ugh. So, in once, a nutshell. Once again, the box says. <laughs> yes. So, the overview. All right. If you're looking at this as a role-playing game. <coughs> I'm sorry, everybody. <clears throat> Go ahead. Out of 10, I give it a 3. Um, To be honest, the, the world, it's, if you're just looking at it as a role-playing game, the world itself, though some uniqueness to it, mm-hmm. like I said, I, I think you could really could play around those, those strengths or whatnot to, to make an interesting form of of like an alignment type of thing. But if you're just looking at it as a role playing game, I have a game to play combat and all that. Right. right. Uh, okay. This is, this is bolted to a, a biblical learning. Mm-hmm. So if you're not interested in the biblical learning part of it and you just want a role playing game, the system itself, uh, to my opinion, not really worth it. Mm-hmm. There's other simple systems out there. If you're looking for just the setting of the game, it's interesting, but it's, it's not really that unique either. I mean, it's, it's a f- high fantasy world. Uh, Without magic, but I mean, it's it's really not. If if it if you take out the context of the Christian uh, morals and and goals, it's really not that even interesting of a world. 
Um, so if you take out the, go ahead. Okay. If you take out the, the, the religious aspect yeah. of it or the theology out of it, mm-hmm. you're left with a, a game that is really, really simple, but not simple enough to be interesting and not interesting there'd, there'd enough. There'd be other games that would be better to just right. to play. Now, if you're looking at this as a teaching tool, I'd probably give it a seven out of 10 because uh, it does give situations that are done in a mock way that younger kids would mm-hmm. find more interesting than watching an after school special or just listening to adults talk about their past. So if you have kids that like fantasy and role playing and you want to teach them Bible verses and Christian theology, this is a 10 out of 10 for you, honestly. Yeah, like it's a very specific right, thing. That's a small, and it's, small niche, and it's, though. But it is geared towards that very specific. Yes, it, it is, it, it is it's very much. Once again, it says it right on the box. Right. You know, I don't know what this. You know, that's, I thought. But to be honest, the, the reason why I wanted to review this is because when I read that, I'm like, oh, I gotta check this out. Like, I, for, <laughs> for the longest time, any any type, uh, any time I've come across the words Christian and role playing, it's always been diametrically opposed. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, I want to see. And and to be honest, like I said, whoever the people who put their time and effort into this game. They did a great job of, of putting their time in. Like you could tell that they liked what they did. I, I think and how they did it. I don't know, but I think this was a direct response from somebody telling D and D's bad. Yes. I think somebody who was like a religious people, somebody who was religious said, no, this is a good idea. Here's my take on it. And, right. and tailored it directly to uh, specifically Christianity and role playing and yes. just took what they had and, you have to admit it's it's a nicely done product. Too. It is. It's, it's, it is. Oh, I'm not I'm not putting it down um, because it's 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 got theology in it. Yeah, yeah, no. What I'm saying is, for, as no, far not as at all. We're not saying go, that at all. Right, yeah. As far as game mechanics go and everything, I mean, if you're looking for a really dynamic role playing game, this this really is. It's not. It didn't blow my socks off as far as like setting goes or ideas in it or anything like that. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like, oh wow, that's a really cool setting. Like when we did Blades in the Dark. Yeah, like when I read the very first part of that setting, I had to read it verbatim on the the cast because I'm like, you people need to hear this is what you're stepping into with this game, mm-hmm. like in a, a city that's run by demon blood and all that. I mean, this is fan freaking tastic. Um, with this game, it's it's a fantasy setting that they've adapted the uh, the Jesus um, theology or mythos or whatever you want to call it. Theology. into it <laughs> under a different name uh-huh. and and it they just use straight up bible verses for kids to memorize for spells and 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 all the the monsters in it are you know they're meant to show off a certain type of sin and and how you can overcome that and everything. so like i said it's a learning tool it, it's pretty cool mm-hmm. and if you have people out there who have let's say are into D D or, or role playing in general but they definitely want to teach like if I could see this going over real well at a youth group event or something like that, where the, it's something different. It's not just your atypical, don't drink, kids, don't think lustful thoughts, kids, or whatever. Like, here's an interesting way to to present these ideas and and something that's not as bland. But as far as a game goes, it's very simple. It's it's uh. Sorry, I couldn't yeah, figure out what that was. Yeah. <laughs> What's buzzing? It's very simple, and it's it's. Easy to learn once you get past all the worksheet stuff. It mm-hmm. really is easy to learn. Uh, but like I said, it I so low I low on a generic role playing. Yeah, if you're specifically looking for something of the uh, the Christian type, yes, and, this, this and you want to teach morals and values through right. a church or something like that. Yes, it's exactly what you want, and right. you want to do role playing without bringing in all the. All the magic and beasts, and slang yeah, and, and all and that moral you know, ambiguity. The like this, well, the fact that you can't. There's you, you're the chosen, all right. you're the reborn or twice born or whatever they said, and then the first, you know, the the the, the first born or the one born, the, the rest of the people under the right. dragon. I like the fact that you. It's very bad to hurt them, yes, or kill them, or take it out on them, or, or you look them as the bad people, you know, and. Uh, I like that idea instead of just because, you know, in D&D, they just go out there and slaughter. I'm like, oh, yeah. these guys are working for this guy. Whether they want to or not, I'll just take them all out. You know what I'm saying? Right. Is that... <laughs> no, that's... That never Josh happens. Is saying, yeah, there's yeah, there's yeah. never collateral damage. But I remember this. This came out in 
eighties, like I, I said. Say, I want to say it came out in 1980, uh, 1984. Yeah, so that's that was when around, when I was a kid. That was the game they were playing. And I, and funny story is, I learned how to play D and D in a church because you know we'd have summer Bible school. And, you know, I'm a, I mean, my mother would probably tell you now, but I'm a religious guy, you know. And uh, uh, we grew up and it was a Protestant church, is Hungarian, and uh, we were there for the summer, you know, doing summer stuff. And the kids were playing D and D, and the parents were like, yeah, "Yeah, they're fine," you know. And then we played, and I learned, and it probably had to be the same time. Like I had to be 12 or 13 years old when I started playing. So well, it was kind of funny. It was when I started telling my wife, cause normally I'll be like, Hey, you want to make a character for this stuff? Uh, this time around she wasn't able to, but I was like, Oh, it's kind of neat. Cause they have these, these nine strengths. And I started, I'm like love joy. And then she, you know, with her background, uh, uh, growing up with, with, you know, pastoral people all throughout her family and mm-hmm. media family. Like she just listed them all off. I'm like, yeah, that that's all of them. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, like she's like, oh yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. That's, it, it's, it's you know, I've I've heard that my whole life. Like so, uh, so we I've never played it, and I I've read it, and I had the old, and I was looking for the old set, and then for some reason I looked at oh I was trying to buy an original copy of this. Oh, and I looked okay. it up, and it popped up. They still have an active website. They still have backgrounds. They still have, uh, they have I think they they have still adventures they publish. And, the, and new products and they're stuff. They're coming so, out with new stuff too. Uh, Starlock yeah. dice game, I think. Yeah, that they, they, they want to put out and everything. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's it's a product that they're that they support. And there's players, you know. So it's yeah. like if yeah, you yeah. want to play this or this something that interests you, because or at least I know enough churches buy it to be like, we'll run this for yeah. you know. Because <laughs> the there's the, there's even a couple of customers here that I know would be like, oh, you know, they're they, you know, they have their religion and everything like that, but they still, you know, they, they get out and they, this would be good for them and um or because you. We do get a lot of uh, church groups that come in, and they just want you know they want the board games, right? You know, obviously not into forty k. What's this war all the time? <laughs> yeah. Death and destruction. Yeah, we're, yeah you got anything <laughs> softer possibly? Maybe like checkers, you know? But uh, <laughs> yeah, but this would be good, and and uh, I laugh about it, but it is it is pretty funny and it's cool. But uh, I grew up with it, and I've always been around. And if that's something you want to see or try or even take a read of, you know, I want to read it now that you said that, and. Uh, I think this it, for, for regular role players. No, you'd be like, here, let's 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 sit down and play this game, and then most people would probably have a laugh. Um, not not that the concepts are ridiculous, just that the way it's presented is a little like. Yeah, it's obviously like, you know right. right. You, you know, mean a troll who wants they, you to or they try to get a, they, to, yeah. tries to use peer pressure to get you to drink his friendship <laughs> juice <laughs> stuff. I mean, it's it really is. Ha- I'm sorry, hammy, but, but it, it. I think it'd be something that you'd have a laugh at, and then. Put it back on the shelf. But if you were serious about it, and I think if, if you're using this as a learning tool and you had kids that got into it, then yeah, I think I, because this would definitely be better than just sitting there in Sunday school. Especially just young, yeah, if you're younger and you get into this and then you'll obviously go up to D&D and all the other role-playing games, you'll branch out from there. I'm, I'm sure you will. So Once, You'll drink the Kool-Aid. <laughs> yeah, you'll drink the Kool-Aid. But uh, yeah, good stuff. So, like I said, it's, it's not a terrible game, but it's not a great game either. It, it fills a very unique niche, <laughs> yeah, it's, and if you're outside that niche, yeah, I no. no I, like I said once again, right on the box. Yeah. <laughs> it says the exciting new adventures to courageous Christians. Yes. It's very specific of what it's for, but for thirty five dollars, it's a lot of it, it's, it's a, it's a, a whole stuff. role. It's a complete yeah, role. And it's game. if you want to try complete something or just look game. at something different, hey, or if that's what you. If that's what you were looking for, if that's yeah. what you like to try, there it is, thirty-five hey, it's bucks. It's in stock, guys. So I got it, and I, I talk to the guys. Uh, you know, I, I email them. You know, I email them back and forth when I need stuff, and they're very good. They do have a cool dice tower they sent me, and the dice. I like the dice because they're the old eighties, old eighties, like a crayon. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. Still, they, I like that. The original one had the cassette tape, which I was surprised you didn't have the cassette tape. Oh, you can it. go online and get the contents of the cassette tape. I think they realized that nobody really owns cassettes anymore. But it would be funny it's if they like, oh, here's an eight track. You know, I think like, actually, <laughs> I think them finding the cassette now would be more more pricey. <laughs> put it in there. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, Reduce because I'm like that, that would have been great if it was still in there, but it it uh, yeah. The link's good enough, but cool. All right, well, cool. I'm glad we had that, but we do, yeah, we do have it in stock. So next time around, we're going to be doing something very different than this. Oh yeah, totally, completely the other end of the spectrum. King of Yellow, King of Yellow role playing game. Yes, which is very evil. Oh, it's cool. Is it? So from what I'm reading, yeah, yeah, it's. I haven't read the entire entirety of it yet, but I've read quite a bit and. Pretty good. Stay tuned, guys. Check it out. <laughs> That's cool. And then uh, I know in October I already set it up, and I can't remember the date I did. It's a 
somewhere in October. Uh, I picked an Arkham Knights. So we're going to do an Arkham Knights. We're going to be doing uh, a lot of the Fantasy Flight uh, board games for Arkham, Call of Cthulhu, anything like that. I want to get what... I have this super cool role playing game that I really want to do, and I'm trying to get John Dunn to do it with me. Where it's uh, it's Call of Cthulhu, mm. but it's it's cool, and this is a perfect place to do it. And um, I just like I don't live know. action or something weird. Like no, that? it's a role playing, but kind of kind of live action a little bit, but uh, not crazy. We're not larping it up here. Yeah, but, we're not you know, swinging we're gonna, foam uh, swords. Around. Not that larpers are crazy. It just. I, you know, so I got friends I who are into it and everything. It's it's never been my cup of tea. I can't fault people for it, but most LARPers are fine. You do have the... Oh, they, you, but that's true with any group of people. One bad apple ruins a bunch. In other words, well, yeah. <laughs> um, more along the lines of like somebody takes it a little, little too yeah. far where you, yeah. you are not festive or festivious, the wise you, you don't actually throw fireballs dude yeah i don't get crazy like uh like i was playing call of cthulhu with these guys remember i had john dunn come in what are you doing <laughs> i had john dunn come in and he played a mad scientist he had the coat on and everything and i, I think you guys like that didn't you josh yeah, so i good. just remember the old uh um vampire the masquerade live action yeah those guys were a little rough oh, i going to gen con and just walking around like this like to show obfuscation or something. <laughs> Even though you weren't playing, you just walk up to people and they'd be holding up their, their hand to show you what, what level aspects they have so they could see through it and you'd be like... And then you get to somebody who had a really high number, you're like... They're like... <laughs> you know? It's just fun I to mess know. with people. I don't know what's going on, yeah. but it seems fun. Joyous right. things when you're 17. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for listening. Uh, next one, like I said, is going to be King and Yellow. We're going to do that in a couple weeks, I think. Yes. And... um. If you got any ideas, give us a call. Give us a shout. Uh, drop us a message. Uh, if you want any game review, yeah. let us know. And uh, give us, uh, remember the store's always, store's still open. Store's noon to nine. Uh, MortalsInc.com. We have an online store also. New stuff's added all the time. We have the TCG player online. You can, and uh, I just realized because somebody asked me, we have e, uh, e gift cards. <laughs> Some guy asked me, are you gift cards? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> but apparently Josh set that up a while ago. So you can even buy gift cards right online and then purchase right online. Oh, that's cool. And um, Convenient. that's it. Mortalsinc.com, 216-712-7169. Once again, I'd like to thank our all the Patreon supporters. Are they here? And um, hope to see you soon. All right, guys. Bye.